Hola, hermanos. <laughs> this is Bud Rich. This is Bud Labs. Uh, Vivaldi is now available in the community repositories uh, uh, in Arch, Linux, so you don't have to install it from AUR. Great news! i3 will soon release a new version. Great news! I have started using XF panel or XFCE panel and the XFCE desktop environment. Good news! I have become a contributor to XFCE and more specifically Thunar and I have gotten already gotten some merch requests uh, applied. Good news! It's great news. And I uh, have set out to fix a lot of, of some stuff that have been annoying me in Thunar instead of using uh, my own uh, version uh, or own version but I, I had, had this collection of dirt dirty shell scripts uh, that I used to use uh, to to change the directory settings and stuff uh, if we go into or if we do this we have icon view here and then we go into this git directory we can see it's list view and this changes automatically now in Thuna that it's not me who have done this feature uh, but it's uh, in the latest versions of Thuna there's a new uh, setting that you can enable uh, called remember view settings for each folder and I believe there are some more work to do to do with this but let's not get into that but I am kind of working on, on uh, extending that functionality a bit right now that's what I'm doing here on Thunar and that is kind of what, what I've been doing uh, at least for the last couple of weeks um, uh, I've been spending a lot of time in the Thunar source code uh, and learning a lot about how yeah, program in C, <laughs> object-oriented programming in C and the GDK uh, programming and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's been really interesting to learn about because uh, all of it was kind of new to me. I, I have always uh, stayed away from, from that type of uh, development because it looks so uh, weird, this uh, GDK stuff. And there are so little uh, ways to get started. There are not so much tutorials and there are almost no good books anymore on the GTK development. Most of them are really old. So it's it's like you have to learn by, by uh, browsing the source of a project basically. And all of these projects uh, look uh, different and stuff like that. So maybe it's not easy to write a book either, but uh, if I had a book, maybe I would have started earlier, or maybe not. What really uh, triggered me into doing this was uh, one, that I wanted to use the latest version of Thunar. I, I have been using a, a really old uh, version of Thunar because it, it has some benefits, but it also has a couple of drawbacks. And the biggest drawback is that it doesn't get any of the new updates and uh, the new features that are actually being developed for Thunar. So that was, uh, I just uh, thought I could fix some things and I, I, I got really into this uh, uh, XFCE and it's a really comfy project to uh, contribute to. It's a small, small uh, number of developers. They are all cool guys. None of them are, it's very different from, at least from uh, my point of view as just observing uh, issue trackers and stuff if you look yeah you know the infamous gtk uh, issue tra trackers about uh, the file open uh, uh, box i don't know if we can do that here oh there is no open file in this but yeah you know that classic no uh, thumbnail preview in in the file opener in gtk won't fix 
and stuff like that. That's typical GTK and GNOME, except CE, just cool guys uh, that do the best they can with the little time they have and the little manpower they, they actually have compared to other desktop environments. And it's kind of incredible that they uh, still are at the, I don't know what that means really, but I would guess they are, uh, except CE is probably the third or maybe, uh, probably the third most uh, popular Linux uh, desktop environment after GNOME and KDE. I, I, I think they are bigger than Mate, but maybe not. Whatever, who cares? It's, uh, it's a quite large project and just a few people and compared to the other projects, at least uh, GNOME and KDE, there, there's so much more people and money involved in, in those projects. Uh, but they are all quite different. But I have always, uh, I have always, the, when I have to use the desktop environment, I have always show, chosen XFCE. <clears throat> and I figured since I'm using Thunar, uh, and since I'm using the XFCE appearance uh, thing, you know, which I of course have here in my favorites in the whisker menu, so I can change the theme of the fly. Um, since I was using that and some other XFCE tools, and one thing that I liked about XFCE is that it uh, it seems to work. It works really well with, for example, i3. You don't have to use the desktop environment to be able to use all, all the programs. But uh, it gets even better if you actually run the the desktop environment itself. So so I I, I decided I wanted to to try XFCE and instead run i3 inside XFCE than the other way around, which it's felt that I did. And that has been a really uh, nice experience here, and I intend to stay here. Uh, as you can see, I'm using XFCE panel instead of polybar now. I also did a hack in the source code here, so we can uh, toggle applications uh, by clicking the buttons here. And this, this basically mean, means that you can minimize windows, you know. That is uh, one of those features that a lot of people who don't understand uh, tiling window managers, they say, but uh, you cannot have a, w you, if you cannot minimize windows, it's like, <laughs> you cannot use something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but you can minimize windows by just sending them to the scratch pad. And that is what this uh, uh, thing can do now. Um, so that's what's been going on here computer wise well i also got a new computer so that's why i started installing stuff all over again and, and uh, i had to re-evaluate if i really should use this gtk2 version and stuff like that and i also just installed xfce before i3 this time because i wanted to try the the new computer see uh, quickly see that everything was working in it and stuff like that you know and it, it, it's easier to do that from a desktop environment but then i just got stuck here I think uh, it was, I, I, I saw this article about XFCE and i3, how we can um, combine Kubuntu with i3. And this guide is, it's quite old now, it's uh, five years old, but uh, it's almost valid as it is. Uh, you, you could follow this and you will get something that is somewhat working, but I, I remember there were some, some stuff that I did different. And this workspace switcher uh, thing that he installs here, you can do that, but it is, uh, I think that uses a different uh, XFCE UI library. It gets a bit weird and I, I wouldn't recommend using this actually. It will just uh, make things uh, more complicated. But if you really want, you can also get a, a workspace indicator that works with i3 in your XFCE panel, but that's, there's more to it than that, in my opinion. And I, I didn't even have that on my non-XFCE setup, so whatever. Um, not really sure exactly what, why this would benefit anyone, but I just figured it's, it's comfy. I like this a lot more, the whisker menu, a lot more than, for example, Rofi. I, uh, 
I like this bar that I can have X size here and uh, you can have cool uh, a taskbar. A taskbar, I didn't even realize that I missed, uh, missed this, but I really do. And it makes even more sense in my opinion when you have, uh, when you arrange your windows like I do. I often hide windows like this. Now it's no way for me to know what the windows are on the scratch pad if I didn't have this taskbar. But now I do, so I can just bring back Tunar like this, you know, it's perfect. Okay, so yeah, that's what I've been doing uh, on the computer. But that's not the reason why I haven't uploaded, or the only reason, because it, I also felt it, it it's nice just to spend, I couldn't make videos about me uh, uh, <laughs> browsing the, the, the source code for Thunar like an idiot, you know, trying to figure out what everything uh, means and does, and it has been a lot of reading in the GTK documentation, which is, uh, the GTK documentation is, is fine, it's good, in my opinion, but... Uh, it's been a lot of, lot of learning and reading and stuff like that. And also <laughs> writing uh, bad code, uh, compiling it, getting errors, trying to figure out what they mean, compile again, it works, but it doesn't really work, you know, stuff like that. But eventually the, the pieces fall into place and, and uh, you start understanding how it works and that's a great feeling. And it's a great feeling uh, to, to actually contribute to one of these projects that I, for, uh, that I actually use and I know that a lot of other people use as well. And uh, just uh, seeing how, how a larger software project like this works, and with larger I mean... Um, I mean... Um, a lot of code, a lot of programs and a lot of lines of code, like every single one of these is uh, several thousand lines of code and I know a lot of, of suckless uh, people they cringe when they hear that but they also don't have any GUI applications so whatever uh, and it made me feel more comfortable uh, especially with C and also with GTK and I, I have some IDs for GTK applications and I would like to try to build maybe in the future some, someday. But I think I will uh, stick to Thunar uh, and keep on contributing to it, uh, being like part of the uh, contributor team for, for at least a year. That's my plan here, uh, stick around. Just because it's, it's really fun uh, being part of this. Now I have been inactive here for, for a week or so because I've had other stuff to do because I've, I've all of a sudden got stuff to do. I haven't really had that uh, since I started this YouTube channel. It, it was one of the reasons I did this because I, I just needed something to, to do. Um, and I haven't really been able to do <laughs> that much else. But now I, I got some, some real life uh, things to take care of. So I, I've been doing that. And that is also why I bought a computer because I needed an, a, a better, uh, more mobile computer for that. So I got this uh, Dell uh, i7, Intel i7 2014 uh, model. Got it really cheap. I think I made a really good deal on it. Uh, and everything's been working really well. Uh, but I bought uh, one of these docking stations, which I had for my old uh, laptop as well. But uh, with this model, I'm not sure if it is the docking station or if it's the computer or a com combination. But uh, there is like, it, it doesn't work perfect. It, I, I get some, sometimes the screen blanks out or, or it just turns black for, for a second and then comes back. And this happens quite frequently, like once an hour or something, which is, it's extremely annoying. And I, I'm not sure what to do, do about it because I really like the computer otherwise, but it's, I, I cannot have that as a main computer, I feel. Uh, and I also don't want to go back now to my old, uh, which is like from 2010, an i5. Uh, yeah, you know how it is. You buy something better, then you cannot go back it's we are it's dirty it's terrible it's uh, it's the consumer lifestyle you know so I think I will uh, 
start building a, a, a real desktop uh, PC. Uh, I, ha I have a, an old old one standing in a corner somewhere uh, that I should just uh, change everything in, like uh, get a new motherboard and a CPU and some memory for it, and then it's ready to go basically. And have that as a main home workstation. Because I've been using laptops here for, for like five years now, not, not uh, using a, a, a battle station at all. Not a good reason why, I don't know. It's, it's nice with these docking stations and you can just grab the laptop, get out, and then when you get home you plug it in and you, you're, you are at the exact same th place, you know. But uh, that's only a benefit if you actually carry your computer with you. Uh, which I haven't really done <laughs> the last couple of years, but now I, I am actually doing that, but now the docking station is, is wonky, so there's that. That's a little uh, story about that, and it's not that bad, you know, it's like once an hour for one second the screen goes black, but it's extremely annoying if you, for example, are doing this, trying to beat your high score on the t -pist. and then all of a sudden the screen go goes black. Then you lose uh, track of what you're trying to write, and you don't want to do that. I've actually not been playing this for, for a while now, just because of that, because it feels like every time I do that, uh, that happens, and then I stop playing. Okay, so what, uh, what do you think we... As you can see, I have a lot of things we could talk about, uh, and I could show you some some of these XFCE uh, stuff, how to set it up with i3, or how to set i3 up with uh, um, XFCE. But um, it's not that bad. That's something we can definitely do on the channel. Look at how, to, how I fix this panel. My plan here, it's, I, I just have this on, as a local uh, uh, fork now of this uh, taskbar thing here. But I plan to upload it just as Thunar, uh, as a custom fork or something. I haven't really decided or if, if it's possible to make it like an independent uh, uh, plugin because it, uh, the panel is uh, th this part, the buttons here, the task buttons. They are one uh, plugin uh, kind of, but it is a built-in plugin. But I think I can make it make my version like an external plugin that you can install. Just that thing, so you can so that will work with i3. And the cool thing is that it will work with uh, any version of i3. I hope uh, not just uh, my weird uh, i3 FIDA setup, but it uh, do require. Uh, i3 as and that more specifically i3 run to work but as you can see it, it 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 just works and there's no delay really when clicking these buttons even if it do execute i3 run passing the the window id and that means it will either focus that window or toggle it so that's something i can show you how uh, how i did um, and we can make some more I will make more videos on Thunar. Um, also started looking into uh, GTK themes quite a bit more. Uh, and I have plans here because I found this theme which I think is just excellent. Uh, one step back, it uh, kind of emulates uh, GNU step. Now the screen actually turned black. I don't think you could see it, but I, I could. It's like a hardware, uh, it's something with a power connection from this docking station. I will research it a bit and see if it can get fixed, but otherwise I, I might have to use a different computer at home. But one step back here, it's a great, uh, uh, as you can see, very old school theme. Uh, what is it called? GTK3 Widget Factory. This is a great uh, program to 
uh, uh, preview themes. I don't know if it works here, live reloading. Yeah, you can do that. So this is what I used to use. And now when I look at this, it's just like, this is so flat and no contrast. I hate it. No, I, I've used this uh, uh, for so long. This is so much better, you know, good old fat buttons with uh, this nice uh, 3D effect and stuff like that. Um, so I just did so, some small modifications like this color, this green gray color here. I think I also uh, made it a little bit lighter than it was originally. It's also very similar to this theme. It's also one of these uh, retro uh, themes that I think is also very good. I also uh, I have forked Adwaita just because I had to <laughs> had to figure out a, a, a thing about it. I, I think I have to make a separate video about that. But god damn, that was that was a rough day. Uh, but I found it. I found what was uh, why it didn't work. Or you know what? Let's show. I, I can show you. You see here, if you hold Control and select files. You get uh, multiple selections like this, right? I think. Well, yeah, no, this works. What what doesn't work is in Adawaita, and you have to pay attention here now because it's hard to see even with this default Adawaita theme. If you hold Control and press arrow key, I press arrow down now. You can see I I change the focus. This is the selection and this is the focus. So you change the focus here and then you can also press space to add to the selection like this. But this rectangle here, it was, I, I couldn't see that in... I could actually not see it in Adawaita either. First I didn't see it in Adawaita uh, or any theme. Because I thought it was a problem with one of these uh, retro themes that I was using. Why didn't... there. Now you can see, I can see it here in one step back. But I don't think we can see it in this one. No, you see, now it's invisible. So this is how I discovered it. I, I'm like, because you can still press space and have multiple selections, but you don't know where the focus is. And I thought this was a, a, a bug in the theme itself. And I spent so much time trying to figure out what CSS uh, uh, property to, to set to, to, to get this uh, uh, focus rectangle. Uh, and then I, I realized, hey, I have to try it with the default Adawaita theme. And I didn't get the focus rectangle there either. So then I thought this must be a bug in Thunar and I reported it. Hey guys, I find this is weird. But apparently it had just been, it had just been fixed just a couple of weeks uh, earlier. Uh, you had to install the development version of EXO, which is this uh, middleman uh, thing that XFCE uses. Uh, it's like... It, Whatever, let's not get into it. But it's sometimes it's a middleman between uh, XFC programs and GTK uh, library. And they had actually fixed this now. So now you can see this uh, focus rectangle. But you also have to make sure that it is uh, in the themes. And many themes, they, they don't even know that this, this exists. I don't know if this one have it. Well, this one has it. Uh, and I wanted to add that to this cool one step back theme. And I had no idea what property it was. I, I tried inspecting because you can do weird things like this and open like a inspector. I pressed control shift I and you have to, yeah, you have to do some weird stuff to get this working. But then you can actually, uh, this is like uh, dev tools in a browser, but for GTK applications. And then you can see some of these, uh, CSS properties and stuff, but this focus rectangle thing, it's it's super weird. It doesn't make any sense how it works, uh, but I figured out how to add it to one step back here. So I added that. So whatever you, you hear, it's a weird, weird uh, trip, this GTK theming. And that's one thing that I really don't like about GTK, that they have made it the GNOME, or maybe the... The GTK uh, people, I'm not sure if it's a GTK foundation, there are probably somewhere. But they really don't want um, 
people to interfere with their excellent design, you know. So it's really difficult now to make working themes. There's always something missing like that and stuff because it's so complicated and almost no documentation on what's going on. You basically have to go into the GTK source. That's what I had to do to figure out what was actually triggering that rectangle. Uh, it took me, it, it actually took me a whole day to get that working. Because I, I, I went on the wrong uh, track, so to speak. I, I tried to do it in a different way, which seemed more obvious, but then that didn't, whatever. Uh, but the GDK, they don't want people to change their excellent design. And they constantly add new weird design elements. And there has been a lot of controversy about uh, client-side decorations and recently the XFCE project have actually decided that they will also now go with this uh, client-side decorations meaning they will have buttons in the title bar XFCE has always used this weird weird extra title bar thing which I also don't like so I, I, I don't know but now they will use uh, it, it will look more or less like GNOME and th this is a I don't like this, but whatever, it's not like that's a deal breaker for making something good or bad, but I, I don't really know why they have decided on this. I haven't read up too much, I just get sad when I see it, you know, but that's just how things are. I'm not a, the biggest fan. And this, by the way, is a really nice, um, it's, it's, it's like a wiki, but it's also like a news Linux news aggregator. Um, and some K-pop, or <laughs> quite a lot of K-pop also. But it's very good articles, and and and, um, and there's a lot of it. And I'm not sure who is uh, doing this, how it works, or if anyone can, if it is like Wikipedia and we can, you can create an account and, and add stuff here. But this is one of the best, or maybe even the best site of its kind, in my opinion, right now. I don't know. But they had that uh, article about uh, XFCE uh, becoming GNOME Lite, which is kind of a harsh thing to say, and that there is uh, now, I'm not sure if it is an old XFCE developer who have forked the UI uh, library, kind of, not the EXO, but like XFCE UI, there is a a package called that um, forked that and removed all of the client side decorations from it so you can get a more classical uh, XFCE experience by using that I haven't really tried it and I cannot recommend it or, or vouch for it but it is there somewhere here it is I think it's kind of inactive well six days ago that's actually good news I believe so I haven't looked into this in a, like three weeks or something. So uh, yeah, I guess they are keeping keeping up with the with the XFCE uh, upstream then. Uh, but whatever, you can look into this if you want. If you're using XFCE and are missing uh, the good old Windows, I I don't really care that much. It's the Windows that we are talking about here are like let's see. Okay. I think the preferences window, yeah, because and, and I have modified the theme here to remove the text, so it's I, I haven't found a way to remove the icon yet. But this is good enough for me. Uh, it's a bit annoying. I, I wish this bar wasn't here, you know. And I also run, uh, I don't know if they mentioned that here, because there is. Um, is like a here it is I think it's this one gtk3 no CSD um, or is it this yeah it is this one this also removes client side decorations but or what it does remove it are the buttons uh, and gives you so you can get a, a little bit more uh, uh, regular window 
But just still, yeah, you see, it's like, it's very difficult to get rid of all of this stuff since it's now hard coded and this is how they want it to be. And that it, it's all GTK people who just decided no one likes it, but they have just decided that this is how this is how how it will look like. And the ones who suffer most from this really are uh, us, you know, the 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 risers running our stupid uh, tiling window managers with uh, window borders looking like this because we want this so. We, we want as little uh, window decorations as possible. But now all of a sudden we get a double window decorations. Now we get more, you, you, you get really punished for using. And I, I think that's, that's one of the reasons they are doing this. And I believe that we should uh, try to boycott this. Uh, when, when you find an application that is too ugly, a GUI application, everything is great, but then you see something like this, you know. Choose a different program. Uh, vote with your feet or with your wallet. Even if it's free as in beer, there is always a wallet, especially when we are talking about GTK. Um, okay. I would like to say that I got sidetracked, but I don't know because I don't think this video really had a track here. But what I want to do in, in the upcoming videos, even if we have all of these cool gooey things here, I still just want to go back and write some bash uh, applications, you know. And I have this uh, guy here, info. And as you can see, it displays window info. When I change window, it changes information here. Uh, instance name, class name, window uh, title format, window type. Geometry, so the position and size of the window, window ID, container ID, and it also displays the last pressed uh, key binding. And now it was super E, which is launch FM, which is launch Thunar. If I press that again here, we we'll see that it says now a one here because I've pressed the, the same key binding two times. Pressing it again, same thing. Uh, and sometimes I have set, set this up to toggle uh, windows, but sometimes it doesn't. And that, that is by choice, actually. Uh, but I have this key binding, Shift Super Return, that focuses this window here. I3 Term Instance Term Small Font Large. If I press that key binding again, it toggles that window. And now it's easy to follow what's really going on on my screen here by looking at this info window. But I thought... Let's build this together because there are some interesting parts in this uh, that I haven't really talked about uh, prior. Because when I did the last um, update of i3 as I, uh, I discovered uh, a new way to parse uh, JSON uh, in Bash, and it is uh, I, I think it's a good or good in quotation marks it's a good way to do that if you if you really have to do it you can do it like this let's see i got it here our info you write the regular expression like this then you only then we get the json here and then we only need to do one single regular expression test even if the regular expression is really advanced and complicated so it is uh, it is a expensive thing uh, for for the cpu to 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 process but it's just one single thing one single uh, execution of the json parser if you would would like meaning that it is uh, a lot faster and more efficient uh, than looping a json line by line looking at the key looking at the value seeing if the blah 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 Th this is an an Believe me, I, I have done this in so many different ways, all of them wrong, and this is this is also stupid uh, because you shouldn't parse JSON with Bash. But I have done that anyway, and I believe I now have found the ultimate way. So I I, I would like to show you that, uh, and that is what what's used here to to display this information. And there will also be some repetition on the i3 message subscribe functionality uh, but I've also found um, this cool thing and that, that's what uh, actually triggered me into start recording this video in the first place uh, I didn't really know about this socat uh, command and this uh, way of 
managing FIFOs, uh, more or less making a terminal a slave terminal. It, it, it's very interesting stuff. And I've found a really nice uh, 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 bash workflow that automatically reloads scripts when you save the file in the text editor. It displays the output from the script in a separate uh, terminal um, unattached to other stuff by using this socat uh, method and stuff here. It's, it's, it's really nice and I would really like to share uh, that workflow with you, but it's also somewhat uh, uh, entangled in all, all kinds of stuff. For example, this uh, info window, it opens in in a new terminal like this. So I think we have to start there, uh, how to open your own scripts in a separate terminal. I know I have done videos about that, but I would like to, to really go into depth on how I do it with this i3 term thing to which I can also sh set the specific font and the size of the terminal from with a command line thing. And it's not a big script at all here, so maybe we should uh, take a deeper look at that uh, before doing anything else. So even if, it, if most of the parts I have shown in previous videos, but I also have found better ways to do all of them. And I think it, it will become really clear uh, how these parts can be uh, are useful uh, illustrated by this project. So that is what my next video will be about if they haven't released a new version of i3 by then, because then I have to make a video about that, you know playing some firebrand, but we will see what happens. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.